everyone and welcome to our latest edition of Facebook Live, What You Need to Know, Radiation Oncology Edition. I'm your host, Jennifer Williams, and we are lucky enough to have uh, not only an incredible doctor, but a really remarkable person, Dr. Allison Grant, Chair of the Department of Radiation Oncology here at Cooper and Barnabas Medical Center. We're going to walk you through the ins and outs of radiation oncology from treatment to how it works and so much more. So if you have a question or you want to leave Dr. Grant a nice comment, just drop us a little line below and please help me welcome Dr. Allison Grant. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Thank you so much for asking me to speak with you today. I appreciate it. We're, we, we love you. You're one of our favorites around here, so this is a nice opportunity. So why don't we just dive right in and tell us a little bit about the work you do here at CBMC. So I'm Chair of Radiation Oncology at Cooperman and Barnabas Medical Center, and I oversee um, the delivery of and safety and sort of the overall department for our patients who seek care. Mm -hmm. um, it can be patients either with cancer and also in radiation therapy, you sometimes treat benign diseases or non-cancerous diseases with radiation. So I have the privilege of overseeing the department. And, um, you know, just to kind of broadly, like what is radiation oncology? So um, radiation, Oncology um, is a description for radiation treatments, x-ray treatments to treat primarily cancer patients. Mm -hmm. There's radiology, which is a diagnostic department where they do CAT scans or MRIs mm -hmm. or the things you more traditionally think of. But radiation oncology is actually therapeutic radiation, therapeutic x-rays to help to treat and cure cancer. And, and the word radiation sometimes scares people. Is it safe in terms of the amount of radiation someone's receiving during their treatment? Yes, yeah, so in, the, in our field, we actually um, design radiation fields to target tumors and to protect uh, normal structures around mm -hmm. them. It's not like there's radiation everywhere yeah. in the room. The treatment fields are designed with very small margins to treat the cancers or the tumors and to block the normal structures around them and to protect mm -hmm. them. So yes, it is safe. And when you leave the radiation department, you're not like radioactive or bringing radiation into the real world. Yeah, that's this are, these are the questions out there. <laughs> um, and when someone is going through treatment, how can they be? How can patients um, be best prepared? You know, how often do they typically go? I guess I'll start with that. So it depends a little bit on the disease. So mm -hmm. radiation treatments can vary from one treatment to as many as 45 treatments. It depends a little bit on the type of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, there are guidelines on how best to treat our cancer patients. In general, radiation is given as an outpatient treatment, so patients can usually drive themselves, come mm -hmm. for treatment, and, and leave the department. In terms of best preparing, um, uh, we have a big infrastructure and our nurses help our patients to prepare before they mm -hmm. start treatment and review if there's any dietary restrictions depending on the diseases we're treating. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, um, there's not a lot that patients need to think of before they meet us mm -hmm. because we will spend a lot of time with them helping them to yeah. prepare before they start uh, their treatments. And are people, when you're receiving radiation treatment, are they still able to go about their daily activities is, or is it something that kind of, or I guess maybe it depends? Again, it depends on the mm -hmm. disease. So for example, if it's a patient with breast cancer, um, especially a woman who has not had chemotherapy, they frequently can do everything in their life normally. Mm -hmm. Many patients work full time, they manage their children. Um, if for certain diseases, mm -hmm. if you're getting especially chemotherapy and radiation at the same time, let's say for lung cancer or esophageal cancer, the side effects may be yeah. more significant. Mm -hmm. So um, patients may need to sort of adjust uh, their daily lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And what side effects can patients expect? So again, it depends a little bit. Radiation works mm -hmm. like a pencil. So it, we target uh, an okay. area, so it depends on what area we're targeting. Okay. So if you're treating a woman, let's say with breast cancer, mm -hmm. the breast sits outside the body. Mm -hmm. So there are really not a lot of side effects, breast tenderness or um, some discomfort. Mm -hmm. But if you're treating an internal organ, um, let's say a, a stomach cancer or uh, prostate cancer, mm -hmm. patients may have a little bit more change in bowel movements or, or side effects just related to or pointing this yeah. pencil. Where That's a good way to look at it, yeah. That makes that helps my brain make it yeah. more sense. And does it hurt? Radiation does not hurt. Okay. Um, there's really two main types of radiation. There's internal radiation, that's something called brachytherapy, mm -hmm. and external radiation, which is like an x-ray. And actually sometimes mm -hmm. we even give IV radiation. Those are radio oh. pharmaceuticals. Okay. Um, but radiation does not hurt. You do not feel anything when you're getting treated. It's mm -hmm. sort of in general like a chest x-ray when you, you don't feel anything when the machine is on and you don't feel anything when the machine turns mm -hmm. off. 
And to kind of um, go on the different types of treatments, so there are so many different types of radiation treatments. Can you tell us some of the main ones and what they treat? So um, uh, one of the newer technologies or more advanced technologies is something called stereotactic body radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. That's a treatment which can be anywhere from one to five treatments. Mm -hmm. We have a machine called a CyberKnife, which is designed to specifically deliver this type of treatment, mm -hmm. specifically for patients with brain tumors and also some benign diseases like trigeminal neuralgia okay. and also for prostate cancer. Um, and then there are other types of radiation where you give a slightly lower dose over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and you wanna do image guidance so that you can ensure that you're targeting the tumor every day and mm -hmm. not treating normal structures. So we have in our department a Halcyon machine which helps us to do that. Mm -hmm. We have a Truvin linear accelerator and um, we actually are uh, really lucky because we're going to be opening a freestanding cancer center mm -hmm. in approximately a year and a half and in that machine we're going to have some in that department mm -hmm. we're going to have a machine known as an MRI linear accelerator which will have the imaging capabilities of MRI and really help us to target the diseases that we need to treat. Yeah I recently um, went on a tour there's there were no walls up yet and we were downstairs um, where you all are going to be and it was really interesting to see like the lead in the walls yes. and, and kind of all of the, the setup. It's, it's really interesting and that's going to be really wonderful for people. Yes. Um, and to kind of talk about, um, you know, not playing favorites, but the team here is is some of the absolute best that, uh, you know, there is in this hospital. Um, you know, tell us about them and, and that compassionate care that they help provide patients. So I am truly blessed mm -hmm. to come to work every day with the people that I work with from the front desk staff, um, the practice assistants, mm -hmm. the patients who do, uh, the people who do registration, mm -hmm. our nurses, our physics team, our radiation therapists, our dosimetrists, our psychosocial support services, and even housekeeping and the transporters oh. that come down here. <laughs> Everybody who comes to work here every day yeah. brings their A game. Everyone comes to work recognizing that we could be a patient or it could be our family members and wanting to make every person who walks into this department mm -hmm. to feel as comfortable as possible and as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And I really cannot say enough yeah. about the staff and the people that I get to work with and my physician partners, of course. Yeah. They're, they're, everyone's amazing. And it is like, it's like a little mini city. Like there's so many, every time I come down, there's someone new I'm meeting or, you know, a, a different, I don't think people realize how much actually goes into you know, this department and, and, and treating patients to really make sure that they are getting the best care, it's amazing. It is a great work environment yeah. and I think coming to work and taking care of cancer patients is such a blessing and a privilege, but if you do it well, you know, it, it's emotion because yeah. you want to care about the people and their families. Mm -hmm. And I think working with such a compassionate team mm -hmm. where we all also support each other, it's yeah. just really, I, I am, I'm, I am very lucky. They're a lot of fun too, everybody. At Halloween, they always, they really do it up around here. That is true. We, can, we always post their pictures, so make sure you check back. And kind of, um, to kind of take things, you know, we've talked a lot about where we are now. Where do you see the department going? So again, we mentioned we're gonna be mm -hmm. opening this freestanding cancer center down the road, mm -hmm. uh, not down the road, like almost oh, on the property. <laughs> um, and so part of the future of radiation therapy is gonna be adaptive treatment planning. Mm -hmm. So tumors can change and shrink while we're treating them. Um, so having imaging capabilities where you can see that happening mm -hmm. and change your treatment plans in between each treatment. Remember patients are coming every day or every other yeah. day where you can design new treatment fields. The MRI uh, machine, linear mm -hmm. accelerator is gonna help us to do that. Um, again, we're having much more sort of targeted treatments and understanding the biology of the cancers yeah. more so we can better define who needs radiation and who doesn't because mm -hmm. not everybody needs treatment um, yeah. and we definitely don't treat people who don't need treatment. Yeah. Um, the radio pharmaceuticals giving IV injections of radiation to target let's say prostate cancer mm -hmm. there's a lot of studies looking at that where the radiation you give is particularly taken up in the cancer cells mm -hmm. so I think that also is yeah. going to be part of the future but just really individualized we're much better at individualizing yeah. cancer care we will continue to do that and, uh, and again being in the new building we're going to be surrounded with our medical oncology yeah. colleagues our surgical oncology colleagues obviously all the other infrastructure yeah. that will go there to make the process as seamless as possible for our patients it's it's truly going to be a wonderful facility for our patients when that does open yes. it's 2025 yes. just so you know um, yes. and I'm going to embarrass you for a second but you have always been someone that I admire around the hospital. Um, I remember seeing a photo of the 
the medical staff. And I was like, oh man, like Dr. Grand's the only woman there. And then someone said, you were the first woman. And I was like, yes, yes, she was. And I think that's so amazing. And I think that you always are true to yourself and, and you set such a great example and, and break down those barriers. So for me, uh, in asking you, like, what advice do you have to young women out there looking for a career in the medical field? Uh, you know, just anything, any little insights you have to share, any advice? So, I mean, work hard, but mm -hmm. they will. Young women will work yeah. hard. I think um, be true to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, be true to yourself. I think uh, be a good listener because you can always learn from the people mm -hmm. around you. To be a good leader, you must be a good listener because you definitely don't know everything as a leader and other people know frequently yeah. a lot more than you. Um, have humility because mm -hmm. I think, again, um, as long as we question ourselves, we have the opportunity to continue mm -hmm. to grow and learn from those who can teach us. Mm -hmm. um, and I really just, you know, I again, I feel honored. I've had the support yeah. of the medical center also mm -hmm. in my successes. And just briefly, I also, you know, we're part of Rutgers at mm -hmm. Cancer Institute of New Jersey, which is the largest healthcare system yeah. in the state of New Jersey and an amazing cancer program. And I've had the support of Rutgers and CINJ also to help me yeah. to grow and expand my career. So. Yeah, you're amazing. Yeah. You are. We love it. And and that's about wraps it up, I think, for us today. So again, thank, thank you, you so much for being here. Um, and if you have any questions, even after this is over, you can always leave us a comment, and we'll we'll get those questions to Dr. Grant. And if you want more information about our cancer services, please visit uh, www.rwjbh.org/cancer. And if you want to uh, make an appointment, if you need to make an appointment with Dr. Grant's office, that number we'll give you too is 973-322-5630. And thank you again for being.